इंटरनेशनल योगा इन द मॉर्निंग वी हैड अ वंडरफुल सेशन ऑफ प्रोटोकॉल डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन बाय अवर फैकल्टी एंड स्टूडेंट्स एंड नाउ वी आर एनर्जाइज्ड विथ अवर बॉडी एंड माइंड एंड ईगर टू लिसन टू अ स्पेशल टॉक ऑर्गेनाइज्ड फॉर टू डेज ऑन टू डेज अकेजन इट इज बाय मिस सौम्या अय्यर हु इज विथ अस वी आर प्रिविलेज्ड टू हैव यू हियर मैडम दो द सेशन इज इन द वर्चुअल मोड वी वेलकम यू Uh, and uh, heartfelt welcome and uh, gratitude that you accepted our request i take this privilege to introduce madam in brief uh, she has a very uh, long profile and uh, holds academic qualification as well as she is actively engaged in the field of yoga i am just going to highlight few points in that uh, ms samya ayer is currently working as the executive director of prafulla ulja foundation it is the ngo working in the field of yoga she holds her masters in peace studies from austria with focus on yoga for international peace building she has also done vaikiti yin and restorative yoga from southwest institute for healing arts arizona uh, she also holds another masters in environmental security which is also related to the uh, focus on yoga Uh, madam soumya ayer is uh, actively engaged in the uh, activities related to yoga especially for the special communities so uh, the topic for her today's talk is also related to same uh, how yoga can be uh, useful for the vulnerable communities and she will be sharing her experiences and how she is actively uh, growing this network and wants more and more people to get engaged in this noble cause so uh, i'll be requesting her to begin with her presentation just before that i want to share with you all that as you know our institute has been uh, working in the field of yoga since 1989 since its establishment now when we became university in 2019 and in 2020 when we became the ej somaya institute of dharma studies we have got added so many dimensions to this field and we are uh, looking forward to many activities in the field of yoga uh, amongst which one uh, lecture series i just want to share this with all of you who are present today with us that we are going to arrange one lecture series specially dedicated to the research in yoga which is a very blooming field uh, upcoming field and uh, people are looking forward to do research in the field of yoga so we are arranging this lecture series uh, where different scholars will be sharing their thoughts it will be arranged from 5th july to 16th july the details will be shared uh, in due course of time but just on this special occasion i wanted to share this special news with all of you So now I request Ms. Samya Ayer to begin with her presentation. Thank you, Madam. Namaste and thank you, Prachi Ma'am, and thank you to the entire um, KS Somaya Institute for Dharma Studies. I am really honored to be here today and. very very no to be honest this is a blessing because as prati ma'am said i really want to expand the work of prafulla urja and service to the communities so let us start with a short prayer um, i'm going to use the um, guru stotram because oh, one one verse from guru because as you'll shortly see the guru is the guiding light so please join with me gurur brahma gurur vishnu guru devo maheshwara gurur sakshat par brahma तस्म श्री गुरव नमता पिता बंधुर् सखा 
Namaste, everyone, and thank you for your participation today. Um, I'm going to ask that you do as much participation as possible. I will start the, the presentation. But as we go along, if there's a question or a comment or a thought, please step in. I am by no means an expert or the omniscient one. I am just the same as you. I'm studying, I'm learning in different ways. Okay, I'm going to try to screen share. Yes, screen share, Google Chrome. Oh, no, I should undo this. Screen share the whole thing because I'll go to other pages. Are you able to see Prachi, ma'am? Yes. So today I'm going to talk about a subject that is very dear to me, which is yoga for communities in vulnerable conditions. So I'll start with my story of service. And I gave these, these particular um, shlokas because it is very important for family to be a part of your yoga journey. It's important to find gratitude for whatever they have given. Sometimes it's difficult. I'm not going to say no. But as much as possible, find gratitude for what they have given. And for me, that means my parents, my grandmothers, my grandfathers, I feel they are actually the source of my knowledge. In addition to my guru, uh, Sri Amma from Mata Amrita Nandamai, who is verily an example of selflessly serving without end. I think we'll all, we can all agree that, you know, to sit for even two minutes is a long time. We all know that sitting in, in our asana practices or our dhyana practices, sitting for two or three or five or 15 minutes is, a, is an immense uh, boon. And yet here is somebody who sits in the same position for hours and days on end. Um, after that, I'll have to also give a lot of credence to my own, uh, beyond my family beyond, and beyond my guru, to my education, which somehow happened to be at a Jesuit university, Santa Clara University in the US, where you know, if any of you are familiar with the Jesuit tradition, there core value is service. Whatever you learn, you go and serve. So even in math class, even if we took a math subject or a chemistry subject, okay, go and share it with somebody else. And finally, also from my work experiences and throughout my, my career over the last, spending over the last 20 odd years, um, I've always somehow managed to be involved in community, in education, in training, and in different social justice issues, ranging from children's issues, women's issues, mentally challenged, special needs, um, prison communities, rural communities, whatever it may be. Somehow, even if I, t even if I say, no, no, I want to do a PhD in yoga, the universe says, no, you stay here and you take care of what I have given you. And I'll just share some, I'll add some pictures. And my parents are here today. I'd love to honor them also. Thank you for being here. Despite they are uh, 12 and a half hours behind, it's not yet yoga day for them. Um, and also my grandmother and my aunt and uncle who always support me, especially as 
my organization, my NGO, Prafulurja, has been growing and growing. They step up to the plate every time, support me every time. So what is yoga? I think you all know yoga comes from yuj, meaning to unify and to eliminate the fluctuations of the mind, yoga chitta vritti nirodha. So in building peace or in building yoga for communities in vulnerable conditions, it is unifying the goals of all the parties in conflict so that there's no discriminations or fluctuations of rights or access to yoga and no reduction of the roles of any of the swadharmas within the world. So, and we'll go into this a little more deeply. The goal basically for, yogas, for yoga is to have equal access to all, especially those who are vulnerable. We know how much yoga supports us as individuals and how it supports a client or a yoga class that we're teaching. So if we can then take that, you know, that same practice or a similar practice, we'll talk about what type of practice soon, and build equal access to all. So I'd like to also talk about what yoga therapy is. I'm not going to give you the entire, uh, I'm not gonna read everything, but according to the International Association of Yoga Therapy and Richard Miller, who is a well-known researcher in the field of yoga, Yoga therapy is defined as the application of yogic principles to a particular person with the objective of achieving a particular spiritual, psychological, or physiological goal. And it can use all of the, uh, the Ashtanga path, and it can also use different other applications, meditations, uh, study of texts, counseling, it could be yogic counseling as well, or Vedic counseling, which I know Vedic psychology is becoming a very popular field nowadays. Um, it could be visualization, it could be rituals, it could be prayers, whatever makes sense to that person. It yoga therapy respects the individual differences across the board. Now, until now, yoga, uh, yoga therapy is looked at a particular person. And therefore, it is used to, uh, to gain a sense of power for the individual, whether it is for physiological or physical power or the uh, power to concentrate. Um, Shakti Kramas, basically, and to, to build that strength. Also yoga therapy, the goal of yoga therapy is to heal specific problems. And I think everybody is well aware of, you know, there's a lot of yoga therapy happening now for condition, chronic conditions, diabetes, um, heart conditions, cancer, back pain, all of these different. So there's a lot of people in these spaces. And then also, uh, Richard Miller says that the use of yoga is to go beyond the physical to understand uh, the self, to know the true self as unchanging purusha. So he goes on to describe what are the different principles of yoga therapy. And I'm going to go quickly that to teach what is appropriate to the individual, uh, to, to understand the differences in different people, to consider the, the location from where the student is or their ethnic background, their background in general, their constitution and their disposition, their age, all of these factors, the time of year, the seasons, and their occupation and what they need. And I think this is very important as we come in, this number six is very important as we come into um, yoga for communities in vulnerable conditions. And finally, to 
understand how much endurance and how much strength the individual has. That's also a very important aspect of uh, yoga therapy when you are conducting yoga therapy as the practitioner. And again, understanding the individual's mind, what they prefer. Some people prefer to do, you know, um, a yoga asana practice and it makes sense. Someone else prefers to go walk in nature. That may also make sense to somebody. Someone may prefer to do chanting. Someone may prefer to do uh, uh, some bhajan practice or, or yeah, again, chanting. So different activities for different people. Oh, no, so when I present, I can't see anything. Now, when we come into yoga therapy for communities in vulnerable conditions, in 1956, Swami Shivananda taught uh, Swami Satyananda and gave him the mandate and the mission to take yoga from door to door and shore to shore. Now, it is our responsibility to take that to the next step to go from community to community and literally knocking on doors and asking for the opportunity to serve unconditionally with, the, with gratitude for the opportunity to learn. And this recognizes those very same principles that we looked at in the previous slide, Desha, Kala, um, Raga, everything, all of these, the Vrittis, and, and to, this recognizes exactly this. And this I feel is our dharma at this junction in the field of yoga and in our lives in this current uh, moment. For me, it's very much my swardharma. This is, as I mentioned before, even if I try to do something else, the universe keeps telling me, come back to this. So many things I've tried in the last, especially the last one and a half years, uh, since the COVID time, I had a very different idea for what I wanted to do. And I went on my path and the universe said, no, you come back here and you, and you work on building yoga for communities in vulnerable conditions in order to build peace throughout the world. So then what is peace? The father of peace studies, Johann Galtung, once said that the basic point of peace is that it is a relation between two or more parties. And the parties can be inside a person, a state or nation, a region or civilization pulling in different directions. Um, so it is also very important to have that internal physiological well being and psychological well being. The, then, further, he talks about the element of violence, peace, and conflict, and that there are three types of violence uh, and three typology, typologies of violence, which can be converted into peace. So I'll go over what is conflict, and then we'll talk about what is peace also. So three definitions, Gandhi. A conflict may be said to be a serious disagreement between the opinions or interests of two persons or two groups of persons in an issue. Again, we come back to this concept of two or more conflicts, two or more groups or two or more individuals, or if it's within you, it becomes two parts of your body that are fighting against each other. For example, I'll, I'll bring up cancer because then my mother is an, is an oncologist and I always think about, and we, and Prafulurja works with children with cancer as well. And we always think about the, the cancer cells and the non-cancer cells and how one, uh, how the cells that have cancer have to be seen as, you know, weaker than the, the healthy cells. In Buddhism, uh, conflict is defined as a contradiction or a set of contradictions, again, between two or more parties, each pursuing their own goals. And to bring in an international perspective, um, the African leader, Desmond Tutu, uh, on, their, on his website, his foundation's website, 
is defines conflict as a serious disagreement or argument lasting over an extended period of time and the opposition of person or forces uh, that give rise to the dramatic action. So now we're going to look at what conflict is, or what violence is, and then we'll talk about the need for yoga to address these conflicts and violence. There are three major types of violence that are, uh, that are defined in the peace and conflict studies. One is structural violence, which is social injustice. This is something that is unequal life opportunities. Um, cultural violence is an aspect of culture that can be used to legitimize the violence. And direct violence is a direct act of um, either a physical, mental, maybe a financial, emotional, can even be a spiritual act of violence to deny somebody the right to follow their spiritual path. Now, what is peace? We've defined peace, but I'd like to define it. We've already defined peace, but I'd like to define peace from the yogic perspective, because as you all know, in the Gita, we look at the, tri, the trigunas. And I'd like to then bring that out as also, can also be superimposed on the concept of peace. So Rajasic peace may be doing something against the community, but of course it's good for the self in the immediate. For example, we all know that buying and selling items wrapped in plastic, buying shopping on Amazon and we get a lot of things, okay, eventually that garbage is going to end up in a slum community and it's going to just destruct their home. Tamasic peace, but on the immediate, you know, we get what we need. Maybe, especially during lockdown, if you can't go to the shop, if there's no place to buy your vegetable, you must buy it on Big Basket. I just, I don't know if they have Big Basket or all. Anyway, some of you must buy your produce, your vegetables and fruits somewhere. So you go online and purchase and it comes wrapped. And, but it, it helps really well for you in that immediate moment. Tamasic peace would be, okay, Yes, I know that community doesn't have access to yoga right now, but it's not my problem. Leave it. I'm happy where I am. Not caring whether the children, the, the children from a low income community have access to school or have access to uh, a computer to do their schooling right now because of the, because of COVID situation, which may take a long time. And then there is sattvic peace, which is bringing peace to all parties involved. But let us think in baby steps. Let us all focus on the meso level of society. We don't have to suddenly one day have peace for the entire world. Maybe slowly, slowly, slowly building up like a turtle. And that is how we light the path like a guru for others to follow. And why yoga then? Because Maitri Karuna Mudita Upekshanam Sukha Dukkha Punya Punya Vishayanam Bhavanathas Chitta Prasadhanam a clear and tranquil mind results from cultivating friendliness towards those who are happy, compassion towards those who suffer, joy towards the virtuous, and impartiality towards the wrongdoers. I am quoting from Ravi Ravindra's book on Yoga Sutras, which he says, where he says, the practice of yoga is meant to lead to more and more sensitivity to all our surroundings and relationships and to develop an increasing understanding and compassion. So Upeksha becomes this idea of impartiality that everyone deserves equal access to yoga. And it becomes an equal access to 
yoga in the sense of the principles of yoga therapy that we looked at a few slides ago, that we're looking at the individual or the community and what their needs are in that moment. Everybody needs the, in, if what we do in this manner, then we start to build this real entire world family called Vasudeva Kutumbakam, that everybody, yoga is for all. There is no one who is not deserving of yoga. Oh, yoga belongs to all. So how can we achieve this yoga and peace in these global communities? First, we have to bring that peace to our own selves. That is practicing yoga as a way of life. And it could be your own form. It doesn't mean you have to wake up in the morning and do asana practice or pranayama practice. It could be that you are doing your gardening work, or maybe you're doing, you know, not everybody has to be a yoga teacher, but it could be that as a yoga teacher, you could also do the gardening work or you do the walk in, in the nature. Uh, you go to another yoga class, learn more about yoga, start doing self-study. Um, and through that, you bring peace into your own self. And then bringing peace to the, uh, to the world and support others to join a yogic path. There's a story that about Krishna once telling Arjuna that even if his if if his devo the devotee who brings one person into the path becomes the beloved of Krishna. And we have been given this opportunity to serve multitudes of communities. In India alone, we can look at a billion people, maybe give or take a few hundred million. <laughs> and if you think of the entire world, billions of people can come into this yogic path. So what is what? who are these vulnerable communities that we can bring yoga to? According to World Health Organization, vulnerable a vulnerable community, vulnerability is the degree to which a population, individual, or organization is unable to anticipate, cope with, resist, or recover from the impact of disasters. It is largely disaster induced. And even the United Nations defines disasters as a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or society involving widespread human, material, economic, or environmental losses and impacts which exceeds the ability of the affected community or society to cope with its own resources. And I would like to ask then, who thinks that we, who can tell me what is, who are these communities now? And I'm going to come into, if, okay, hold on just a moment. I'm trying to reopen this grid video. Okay, maybe this is better. Okay, who are these communities? Uh, if you can type into the chat box, who are the communities in vulnerable conditions? And I'll once again, I'll read out the, you know, if I put the presentation on, unfortunately, I cannot see see what's happening in the in the zoom meeting so i'll read out again what are the disasters that cause vulnerability a serious disruption of the functioning of a community or society involving widespread human material economic or environmental losses and impacts which exceeds the ability of the affected community or society to cope with its own resources. Who are these communities then? Who cannot cope with their own resources uh, that experience widespread economic or environmental 
or social losses. Great, thank you. Ajay says, have not communities underprivileged? Can we, yeah, people below the poverty line, thank you, Uma. Great. Anybody else? Faculty for educational TV, film documentary, the communities are the people in poverty, even the low run, especially able, thank you. People working in high, highly polluting industries. Yes, wonderful. And you know, if we're not able to cope with, and there are economic losses, let us be honest. Uh, that is pretty much all of the communities, the entire world in this present pandemic moment. But I think we have some great who are unemployed for long term. Um, I would have to say that yoga teachers on, you know, just a cursory um, survey, we look at yoga teachers in this time, yoga in this pandemic time, yoga teachers are the one who are now <laughs> more employed. Everybody is, is desperate to find the right yoga class, the right um, yoga teacher, permanent homeless families, super, super. Okay, I'd like to go back to this. Okay, I'll go back to present. So in addition to vulnerability in those senses, I also want to include the idea that anybody without access to yoga is spiritually vulnerable. And I also, I already gave this story, so I won't say it again. And when we're looking at who are the vulnerable communities then without access to this spiritual benefit of yoga, children, children under five, street children, orphans, children with diminished, diminished immunities, um, women, women in violent homes, disabled, special needs, trafficked children and women, prison inmates, transgender and third gender communities, uh, LGBTIQ, QI communities, again, the low income and transitory neighborhoods below poverty line, displaced migrants, refugees, homeless, malnourished and ill. And then I want to include animals and plants who do not have access to Riksh Ayurveda and, and this, that sort of support. Um, conflict and war communities, communities in oppressive regimes who, do, who are vulnerable. And again, everybody who doesn't have access to yoga and wellness and the spiritualities. And as I mentioned before, actually we are all part of this community. We realized this uh, one and a half to two years ago and yeah, one and a half years ago. And in the last, in that time, we've understood that we all are prone to physical, financial, mental, emotional, and spiritual vulnerabilities. So why do we want to bring yoga to everyone? Because it is part of our global mandate for good health and well-being for peace, justice, and strong institutions, and to use our yoga skills to partner with other institutions that work for the upliftment and empowerment of communities. This becomes overall an, an issue of inclusivity. So to bring everyone into the fold of yoga, it's very important to partner for the goals in order to bring good health and well-being. So now I would like to introduce you to Prafalurja and I'm going to come off of this. I don't know. Okay. I'm going to go directly to uh, Pati, I hope the video is presenting. No, ma'am, we cannot see the video. No, ma'am, we cannot see the video. Okay, so share the screen. Okay, can you see it now? 
Yes. Thank you very much. Praful Urja is radiant. Remain and love, light, and light. Peace, good, good living, good living. Traful is acceptance. Yoga is, is good fat. My health. My health. Health. Traful <laughs> is love, passion, and patience. Traful is uh, my sangha, my support system. Is showing the path. Traful is fun. <laughs> Prafuluja is about complete acceptance. Prafuluja is yoga. Prafuluja is home. This is one a, a school and vocational center for special needs children and adults. And one of the things that we learn from this. If you do yoga, you'll be free, comfortable, and free. Our numbers have changed because in the last two years, one and a half years, we haven't had too many programs, but I'll talk about that in a little bit. Whenever I do my practices outside my in the balcony. I always uh, admire seeing this racing sun. And whenever I think of Prabhu Loja, I said the racing sun as it comes up and it gives us light. Same way we should give light to our children. I love yoga very much. Several of our students have also started becoming their own yoga le leaders in their own way. They are able to teach their peers. East or West, yoga is the best. Younger, old, yoga is old. I think yoga kind of incorporates everything because you're doing this chanting, so it's a little bit of speech therapy. And you're doing physical exercises, so it's like physical therapy. And, uh, and they're helping each other out, so, you know, the socializing, yeah. So I think it's a little bit of everything. This is really about this Vasudeva Kutumbakam. This is how the children, they really serve each other. Stop, okay. Before it goes anywhere else, okay. Great. Can you still see what I'm presenting? Yes. Great. So I'll go on and I want to make the rest of this um, more interactive. So I would like to show some other videos about different communities that we work with. I'm going to start with more children because I know where the, it's easy for me to see the, the videos. One of our signature, two of our favorite pra uh, pra asana practices for the children are the rikshasan. It's uh, a balancing posture to increase your focus and concentration. Uh, the demonstration goes like this. Uh, you have to only stand on both your legs. Try to stay near to the wall because it's, one of, it's a balancing portion and you might, initially when you're practicing, you might lose the balance. So try to stay near the wall so that in case you feel that you cannot able to balance, you can fold the wall. So try to stay one or one feet 
away from the wall. Uh, balance on one leg, lift your the other leg up and try to put it uh, above the knees or below the knees, not to put it against the knees because it will hurt your knees. Okay, uh, that's how you balance and once you find the balance then you, you try to focus and concentrate on one point in front of you and that will lead you uh, to balance perfectly. And then once you feel that you are able to balance properly, you can just raise your hands up in a namaskar position like this, or you can raise your hands up. Uh, you can then slowly, uh, once you find your balance, you can slowly uh, release your leg down and repeat the same thing on the other leg also. Uh, the now, main benefits of pre pose is uh, you improve on. Now, one of the things that we do when we work with the children. So we really have to think about every community and every individual that we're working with. With the children, we always work with them in groups. And actually for, for communities in vulnerable conditions, especially in India, you're going to find that it's very difficult to have a one-on-one -on -one session. Um, that is something that, you know, a, a country with that is less populated and with more uh, yoga teachers is able to, uh, provide, but in a in a population of 1.5 billion, and spread across the country, then it and to get people to come together, it really makes sense to partner with their schools, partner with their institutions, and act as a yoga teacher or a yoga consultant for you know either every day or what we do oftentimes is once a week or twice a week, depending on what the schools. Uh, or the organization has a, what their schedule is like. And yes, and then the other thing that we do is for the children, for every practice, we make sure that there is some krida associated with it. That is that they either have to have some uh, music or a rhyme or a um, a story, something that makes sense for them. And so now you'll see, I'm just going to fast forward to the actual. Um, with my friend, I am a dream. I'll grow big and strong with my family. And we don't force the when children at any point. Tall, we allow them to take I their own time. So when small. they are ready, then I we proceed am a dream. I am a tree. I am a tree. Yes, I am a tree. I've got big green leaves that blow in the breeze. When you look at me, you will feel happy. I am a tree. I am a tree. I am a tree. I am a tree. My branches are so long. My trunk is so strong. I reach up to the sky. I see you from up high. I am a tree. I am a tree. So if you notice in this particular clip now, here's a child who is leading the other children we are no longer so that's what makes this sustainable that after some time you'll find that well they may not have a yoga teaching certification 200 hour or qci approved or anything like that they may know the the community the the individuals who work you work with over and over and over they become proficient in their practices to some extent of course they still need a yoga teacher uh, to guide them to the next level, to be that guru, to light the path and show them the path, the, the next steps along the path. Um, I want to show you also. And it becomes, you know, the, the way you approach different communities, because you know, changes based on what that community needs. Now, I also work with the local housekeeping staff of my community. So I'll show you a small clip of their- Arminga, 
Aram Bingo. Ah. So, this is a basic Mohana Mukhtasana series, but we make it fun by saying this Super. is... Super. Now, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Dosa, we make dosa batter, we make idli batter. Pardungo! Anjali super. Konda pinnadi ba Anjali. And I encourage them Next. to come up with their own songs, their own thoughts, because that in that stimulates their creativity and gives them a sense of Padana, Padarande, Padimona, Padinala, Painja, Padinara. Um, I'm also going to say that one of the things that, so Prafulurta has a training program that we utilize to, to, to encourage other yoga, ther yoga teachers to join our Sangha and, um, and learn a lot, learn in depth. It's a, it's a 40 hour training program. It used to be 40 hours. Now it's going to go online and be only 30 hours because we used to take about 10 to 15 hours of doing uh, observations and participation. We cannot give that so much at this point. I can only do online observation once in a while for one or two communities uh, that, I, that we still have access to. We don't have access to a whole lot of communities. And this is why this community, these, well, these communities are particularly vulnerable because in the face of this disaster, this global pandemic, they have nothing. Unlike everyone else. Now we all have access to online resources. We can just go, I want to do a yoga class for International Yoga Day, I go. But I just go online, I click. There's so many of them available for me. I get more than what my, what my time of availability is. But for these types of communities, a lot of our communities come from extremely low income backgrounds where they don't have a smartphone in the family. They may have only one phone and that we can only send an SMS message. And so we're partnering with the other schools and, and institutions that we were organizations that we work with, a prison community or a special needs uh, community, or like I was teaching here earlier this year um, for mentally challenged adults, but when the lockdown happened in May, I could no longer go. And they actually, uh, last week I went for a drive, I was able to go, it's only three kilometers away. I was able to go and say hello. And they said, ma'am, you haven't come for one month, one and a half. I said, yes, I know that. But how am I supposed to come when, you know, the police have asked us all to stay, the government has asked us to stay at home. Um, and I'll show you some videos from that community as well. Come on. Also, I encourage everyone to w use their language skills. I don't have any language skills. I grew up in the U.S. speaking English, a little bit of Tamil, and very, very little bit of Hindi. I'm now, but the more and more we are able to connect with people in their own language. When you're a child, don't expect the greatest of circumstances. I do to serve literally anybody, anywhere, anytime. I will play day point. Yeah, I'll play one of these afterwards. So with children, we do a lot of kridas and games. With mentally challenged adults, we do a lot of uh, yoga asana, mudras, mantras. This particular group that I've been working with, they are excelling at OM chanting. They love chanting OM and they'll continue time and time and time again to chant OM. Uh, I have so many videos, I can't show you all of them. With other communities, with prisoners, refugees, migrants, pranayama, nada yoga, 
uh, guidance through yama niyama and just building a place of refuge so a lot of times what i do is i have them do a mini version of yoga nidra in a prison community they don't have space as you know in india okay in so i think my actually my prison yoga teacher is from sweden and everybody all prisoners in sweden get their own room with a television and they get so many they get access to every prison inmate in sweden has access to yoga dance music and art therapy this is something not available in india and it is time it is time that there are enough yoga teachers who are prepared and trained to go into such locations and to work with such people because just because you're a prisoner once um i don't know if any if has anybody heard of uh, the story of marshawn feltus i like to tell his story if not i'll play a very short video of him he was a prisoner in uh in chicago and he became he he spent 30 plus years in a prison and then he turned to yoga for the first time i experienced yoga i was incarcerated it was towards the end of my sentence i had been convicted and sentenced to 38 years just shot my 18th birthday uh, there was an altercation uh, where i shot and killed a guy and so that's what started the path of you know me becoming aware of who i am and what my place is in this world You know, I, I I joked that you know, if yoga was a woman, I would have married her. You know, so the breathing and the stretching was it was euphoric. There's an intimacy. There's a a a physical. There's a emotional and mental. The first class was one of the better decisions that I had made for my body uh, in a very long time. So when I was released from prison. A lot of what I planned didn't go according to how I set it up. I was looking for jobs. There was um oh, there was a lot of no's. You know, it seems that in a number of ways society works against those uh that are coming out of prison more than working with them. And so the banner of a second chance is not a true second chance. But again, the practice of yoga helped me to settle and to just not get frustrated and apply some negative action towards it. So I wanted to come back to the community and, and provide for the young people and for my peers uh, a sense of hope. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel more than we are trying to enhance a lot of the great things that people are doing. I feel like this is almost fairy tale, you know. Here I am this little knucklehead kid running through the neighborhood and here I am now. I'm a business owner, I'm a family man, I'm responsible in my community, I'm a mentor. The things that I do and the things that I'm a part of, you know, more than just being positive, it has to have a powerful impact. That's all I can do is put forward the best me. Just to imagine if somebody who has gone through who has killed another be living being who has killed another human and then to say yoga has changed his way yoga has allowed him the practice of yoga the philosophies and the practices of yoga have given him that sense of what is right and what is wrong and acceptance as he says to accept okay a lot of and out of that he became a yoga teacher and he started his own yoga classes he is helping others who are in in the path of who are put in his community who could potentially the children and young and youth who could potentially go into gangs he's helping them come out of that through yoga so like that we kind of have to tailor make the yoga practice to every community in that moment a lot of people talk ask us if you know what is a typical class like for a special needs uh, school and we can honestly say there is no typical class every moment is unique 
because it's based on that entire community of that little group of children. If it's four or six or eight children in the class, one child has autism, another, and this is in India. If you're in another, if you're in other countries, you may be able to get a full set of six or eight children who have Down syndrome or who have autism or who have another one particular condition and one particular need. In India, the schools will have one child who is who needs to walk back and forth, back and forth in order to have sensory, uh, uh, have their sensory issues supported. Somebody else will have to sit. Uh, someone else cannot stand. Someone else can only run and jump. And you'll have six or seven like this. And you'll think, okay, what what should I teach? And in that moment, you will have to develop the class to make it what what it needs to be for the for that community for that purpose. Um, some simple teaching tips, a lot of encouragement. Are the asanas going to be, are they going to do perfect asana or pranayama or mudra practice? No, but if you ask somebody to come into chin mudra and they actually just do something like this, this is a huge start for them. And so encouraging that to stand in brikshasan for a child who doesn't have uh, who has bad balance and coordination because of low muscle toning and development. To ask them to stand in Vrikshasan is almost impossible. But through practice and through encouragement, we can get them to uh, that, that place. And I've actually had children who, you know, I always tell the story about my first student with, in India who had been diagnosed at the age of seven or eight with ADHD attention deficit hyperactive condition, could not sit or stand for longer than one minute, longer than even three seconds was a lot. But through practice, and this particular child was uh, from a Muslim family background. So I asked the, you know, they said, don't teach him any mantras, no chanting, he can't do that. That's going to confuse him more than is he Muslim? Is he chanting from this? What is he supposed to do? So we said, we'll just chant, I am calm. And three months after coming to yoga classes, he was able to sit in Vajrasan without opening his mouth, without opening his eyes, without moving his body, completely still in Vajrasan for more than two minutes to a point where I thought, Ayo, what have I done? Is this child still alive? Have I done something wrong to him? And then I asked him, uh, you know, are you okay? His response was, I am calm because he himself understood this is what calmness is. This is what steadiness is. He was able to internalize that. A child who otherwise was jumping on the walls like Superman and Spider-Man. And I think some of the other really great um, I'll give a couple of other examples. As I've mentioned before, several of our students have uh, shown a desire to become yoga teachers. And in fact, we many years ago, we started teaching in a rural community in Andhra Pradesh, in the Chittur district, um, Aragonda, and, and we worked with women. We probably worked with 100 to 120 women in the first phase. And out of those, about 30 women were coming fairly regularly. We worked with them over the course of, I think, eight to 10 weeks. Every weekend we would go and we would teach a, you know, in the mornings, Saturday, Sunday mornings, uh, two to three hours, depending on their availability and our availability. And taught them very basic practices, Pavana Muktasan series, one, two, three, from um, Bihar School of Yoga. We made it very fun. We asked them, you know, to we gave them rangoli um, games and got them to work in little, in smaller groups, build a sangha, build a support system, learn about leadership, learn about uh, team building, learn about presentation skills, and through that, then we did a second phase where we we nominated the top ten people to be our assistants in class. And out of that, about five of the ladies said they are going to take, they, they received a scholarship from a local company, a local corporation to go to uh, Espiasa University in Bangalore 
and do a full one month certificate. And one lady became so inspired. She did a full three month yoga teaching certification. She came back to her villa, to uh, the village and she started teaching in the deep interior villages where we can, we being city people find it very difficult to go to. So we wouldn't, I mean, there's not even a bus to go to that place. This is 30, 40 kilometers off the grid in the deep interiors, really impacting the lives of these, of, of families who are living in, in such places, um, agriculturalists and whatnot. Super. So last two, couple of things, and then I want to open it up for comments and questions. One of the two of the major things is that that Praful Urja focuses on is support through Sangha. Without when I was doing this work by myself, I could only do the work of one. When I had a partner, two of us were working together, we were doing the work of, of three people. When we had a team of five, we were able to do for multitude communities in Bangalore and grow the organization to reach a lot to a huger outreach. Uh, Secondly is sustainability. One of the things that we want to ensure, of course, because of the pandemic, it's been very hard, which is why we're doing some other activities now instead, but we want to ensure that there is a long-term growth of yoga in that community. Because we all know you do yoga today, it's great. You feel good, but you don't have that same sustained equipoise unless you continue practicing day after day after day. So yes, I'm going to skip this one, go on to the next. So I encourage everyone to think about which communities you want to serve and how it impacts your own soul's journey. What I have realized over the last several years and I continue to realize on a day-to-day -day basis is that maybe this is not the most financially lucrative job in the world, but this is my karma. This is what has been given to me through all of my past lives. This is where I am in this moment. And the money, thanks to my parents, will happen automatically. And I'll work on it more and more. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm writing on this. Um, I'll come back to that fact that we are a full entire one world family. Now, who are all in this family? Recently, Praful Urja received a small grant to conduct some yoga programs in one community in a vulnerable condition in order to reduce the fluctuations. We received this from the Yoga Alliance Foundation along with Ivy Child International. And they gave this kickstart to really recognizing on a global level, the yoga therapy that's happening in this field of yoga therapy. And I feel that it is now time for India to take this forward and really support yoga therapists in India who are working in this field. Of course, then, so this, does, this requires the yoga teachers, but it also requires the support from the society and the government. When we talk about yoga for family, which is what today's, uh, this year's theme is, we must include the entire world family and that includes all of these communities. That means adding yoga for healing and empowerment in universities as part of the curriculum. Maybe it also means the government should require, recognize the importance of yoga for these communities. So I'm going to wrap up now and say, please join Profilurja. Um, we have an online teacher training for communities in vulnerable conditions happening in July. Attend our events. We have recently, yesterday we launched a year long conference on called Yoga for a Cause. It is um, every month we focus on a different community and the need and, and methodology for, for working with that community to uplift them and empower them. And please connect to us online on, in, I'm not the social media expert, but uh, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. 
and please help us spread awareness about the need for yoga uh, and yoga therapy to occur in all for all. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Okay, we all are. Super. I will stop here and then open it up to questions or comments, thoughts. All of you are yoga teachers and you are all well equipped in your own right. Um, yes, I believe uh, Prachiji is going to talk about, uh, she said that she mentioned that there's going to be research happening um, in, in the uh, research on yoga and yoga therapy. I would, I would invite any researchers to uh, please work with uh, Prafalurja to understand what the, the transformations are that occur when providing yoga to such communities. And I'll, I'll put down, okay, so you can find Prafalurja on Instagram and on Facebook. I think we're also on Twitter, but I'm not sure how to use it. And on Facebook, it's Facebook. Um, I think it's called Prapulurja One. But please look it up. It's there. Uh, everything is available on Facebook. And you can also email us at prapulurja at gmail.com. Please somebody else speak. I've been speaking for an hour. It is time to hear somebody else. The more I listen, the more I can learn. Oh, hello, ma'am. How are you doing? Uh, the session was really, really nice. Very enlightening. Uh, but more than a question, uh, you know, I just want to share that uh, I have had a personal, a very personal level experience, you know, working with NGOs and trying to, uh, you know, help the people who don't have access uh, to, to uh, probably, uh, you know, these devices like you spoke about, you know, learning online and doing all that. And I have some ready programs which are uh, you know, the efficacy has been tested. Uh, so for example, you know, for children, uh, you know, I have designed something called a yoga drama. So this I initially did for my own society kids, but then later on I took it, uh, you know, because there was a person from the NGO who attended and she wanted me to do it for her kids. They support, it's called, the NGO is called Logic Center. They operate out of Mumbai, based in Pawai, and uh, they asked me to do it for their annual day. And we got a lot of applaud in terms of, you know, children taking to yoga easily because it had a story. And uh, of course, Supriya ma'am is here. So I took a story from Jatak uh, Tales and, you know, uh, just modified it a little to make it interesting for people. So I want to, you know, I, I find what you're doing uh, resonating with me completely. Uh, I really want to help people who don't have access, you know, to uh, to, to yoga directly. So, you know, I would want to collaborate with you and probably discuss the programs because I've been running uh, classes for uh, children as well, which I stopped, you know, like a couple of years back when I got into my own further studies and all. So I have some ready programs, you know, that probably, you know, and I don't mind sharing it with anyone who wants to use it. So, um, so you know, just let me know how can we go about it. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, is it Uma or is it Palak who was speaking? Uh, Ma'am, it's me, Palak. Oh, okay, super. Yeah, please, um, can you email me or um, if you WhatsApp me also, that's great. Yeah, sure. I designed some programs and what I really liked about, uh, you know, your presentation is that how you customize programs, even if, you know, people are, uh, coming from a certain section and we think that maybe they all are vulnerable but vulnerability is also very diverse so even i like to do that uh, that i design programs to suit that particular community coming from their point of view so i can share a few programs with you which are completely ready with me 
few of let's our students to definitely let's let's collaborate yes, so i will i will uh, probably you know just need your email id i think which you shared i'll quickly take it down from the chat because yeah. otherwise it might go off yeah okay ma'am thank you thank you thank you Palak. um i would love to yeah see what you're doing as well i think we all have such great um creativity and to simulate that in others is a blessing i think Hello, Uma yes ma'am this is Uma here and totally awe inspiring i would say uh, your talk as well as the videos that you showed and i'm also a tamilian so i could totally understand those those and idli and all that and the fun way of teaching reaching these kids uh, i have uh, also worked with uh, special children small young children Super. and um, it was very difficult to start with i have to say the first few days were uh, totally chaotic i didn't know how to reach them and um, then I saw some YouTube videos as to how you can reach them through their sensory perceptions, like um, Brahmari or uh, so you make them sense the, uh, the air that is coming out from your mouth or using feathers or yes. uh, blowing balloons yes. or, you know, and... Um, at the end of the workshop, it was a small workshop, not a very long one, uh, which was part of my BA syllabus. And uh, it was wonderful. And when I finished it, the children, the kind of love that they gave, and they recognized me, you know, like Uma teacher or something like that. And even after many days when I met them somewhere in Chembur, and they used to like, you know, they used to recognize me. And I... I think that was the greatest achievement I feel uh, when the child recognizes you. So how important is, um, you know, reaching them through uh, the Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa and Gandha. Like, and uh, I have to tell you, there were some kids who were extremely violent, violent. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, and a couple of them were so violent that they used to, every time I used to hold them, they'll bang their heads uh, onto my chest, you know, so then I was like, how do I take care of them or how do I reach out to them? That was perplexing for me. So if you could just put uh, some, uh, show some light on that. I will sound some, some, uh, I will show some sound on that. Um, we have come across a lot of children who are violent, not because, and yeah, they bang their head either on you or on a wall or the ground or whatever is available to them. But I feel that it's not, uh, what we have understood is it's not because it's because they cannot feel their own body. They don't understand that they're inside, that their soul is inside this body. They don't recognize the body. In fact, if you notice a lot of children with, with similar diagnosis, if in the, somewhere on the autism spectrum or could be other conditions they won't look at you because they don't yes. see you that's right they see the physical but they're talk they see the space around you or they see other aspects um and which is actually very yogic because why should we only recognize the physical body we know that we're not the physical body so uh men you know Mentally, we understand that. We're, intellectually, we understand that that we're not the physical body, but um, they understand that they they understand that and they perceive not the physical body. They don't perceive theirs as well, so they don't know that this is what they're doing to themselves. And we found that this is this singing bowl immediately calms the child down. 
because it resonates with that pure sound of Om. Um, and so I would suggest a singing bowl and you, I use it, if a child is able to lie down, I'm able to put it on their different chakras and, and accordingly play for them. But if not, um, you know, just playing it, the, mo the moment, you know, if you have five, six children, you can't always play uh, the singing, do, do one activity for someone. We tried this, we tried this. I used to, because some children, their hips were very tight. So I used to take these all and I would give it to one or two. To, why does it, why does he get it? I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Oh, well, you don't need it. So that's why you didn't get it, but that became an, an uproar. So then I would just play it. <laughs> yes, because children want to be treated equally. <laughs> like yes. we all do. Um, so I think you can try this with them. Uh, or even just the sound of ohm, if, if you can. But this this makes it very long. The longevity of the of the singing bowl is more than if you're chanting. Uh, you become tired with that. I don't think you become as tired with the bowl. And yeah, you can try something like this. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for that question. I I have a very soft corner in my heart for um, women. Of course, I'm a woman and. Um, mentally challenged adults because it was the first community I worked with in India and also the latest. And then special needs children because they accepted me, they accepted from yoga. You know, they didn't have to say, oh, we need, we want yoga. But they said, the first, you know, one child said, okay, I'll try this. And that child was Muslim. It was a shocker for me. and though his family was very wealthy and they knew more about Bhagavad Gita than I did. The grandfather used to spout Bhagavad Gita left and right to me. <laughs> and I would say, I, I can't quote it this well. Um, and, and then I started approaching other, you know, other community, other special needs communities approached us and, and the schools kept saying, yes, we want this, we want this, this will help our children. They didn't have to but they welcomed us with open arms. And to me, for that, that is always, you know, to me, that's greater than God. Great, so I'll stop talking because I, need, I think Anita has her hand up also. Uh, hello, uh, thank you so much for uh, a very insightful uh, presentation, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to uh, share uh, briefly my background and then my question. Uh, I had already written I teach, uh, but uh, I had also been associated with uh, yoga. Can you hear me? Yeah. Am I audible? Uh, I had done, uh, uh, you know, been uh, interested in yoga courtesy my father and elder sister and got associated with Yoga Institute uh, through their motivation and some prime circumstances in my life. And me being me, I got really the benefits I got sharing yoga. And uh, we made a film amongst many uh, short films on how to reverse heart disease the yogic way in moderate heart patients. And this, I did it as a, a, a media faculty because I was a filmmaker. But my question today, though I'm actively teaching film production, because yoga has been such a strong part and I really learned from you today again, uh, I want to keep doing as and when I can. In this online mode is my question to you. How can somebody teach yoga? Wow. <laughs> um, you're asking the wrong person. I have not yet started teaching online yoga. I have just a few things, a few things here and there. Um, I am going to start next month, uh, Brahma Muhurtam time yoga class. And, and I'm going to select the people who need it emotionally and psychologically 
and people whom I know can understand their own bodies. Uh, who, whom, if I give them the anatomy, they'll understand what they need to do. But uh, I would also say that satsang, chanting, um, if somebody is ready for pranayama practice, mudra practice, but satsang, I would say, is the ideal. And it is very difficult. I, yeah, I'm going to be honest. I think it is very difficult. Just this morning, a friend of mine asked me to teach a mudra uh, session for her, for her class. And, and so I said, okay, but you know, I didn't know. And then he kept saying, oh, the, I can't see your hands. You're this or that. Because then half my time is spent in moving some other teachers and i can point you to some people actually the the karnataka yoga council for women has a um they are willing to train yoga teachers to do online sessions because they understand the system but that being said there are now there's come there are several apps that are coming out and so we can reach out to communities in well, you know, people who are vulnerable right now with COVID issues or with other issues as well. We can definitely do that. Um, Thank you so much. This is yeah. very much food for thought for me. Yeah, maybe my other- uh, You know, in, in a small way, sorry, please continue. No, in a way to give back, you know, to the community, what I have as knowledge and experience in yoga, I have a constant urge to help how to do it. Yes. But time, you've given me the food for thought. Yeah, and can I give one other idea is that if you have access to a big screen TV, one of these big ones, then you can keep that on your, you know, in front, have everybody you know, if you have six, eight, 10 people in your session, 12 people, you can have them and then you can see them fairly clearly. Okay. I think so. I myself don't have this, but this is what people have told me. If I Thank you. They've been encouraging me to get a big screen um, as my parents here are want to tell you, I am against all wires. So, <laughs> so okay. I don't have such things. Um, I'm against thank wireless also, but uh, that is that seems to be the way that we're going. Thank so, you, you helped me, thanks a lot. Yeah, and actually one of the things that I would like to do in the coming year is maybe help some of these communities in vulnerable conditions, um, especially a prison community or a women's home, if they can get a big screen and we can give them access to internet or even a recording, we can make recordings. Maybe it's time we go back to the DVD time or we make yeah. a recording, but it's still difficult to understand in that moment if somebody has a breakthrough yes. emotionally what they might need. Um, and yeah. I, I'll keep in touch with you if I may, ma'am. Thank you. And I'll keep oh, please. if something comes up my way. Please email or, or yes, message yes. any I'll of the be very happy to. Thank because you. you feel, you know, you've lived this life with so much of learning and experience, which may be different for different people. And here is a chance to give back genuinely, because otherwise it just goes away with you. Yes. Thank you. And we want to leave a mark on society or mark in the world. Everybody wants to leave it. We all want Nothing to very grand, but just what is doable and, this and is the, which yeah. you can. And as I was just telling my parents this morning, because they said, oh, you can apply to Jeff Bezos found a wife has a foundation um, and she's giving away billions of dollars. And I said, see, I'm not in that class. I'll start here. And yes, this is where yes. we have to start, but we can build. And with that said, you know, we got this small grant from, from Yoga Alliance Foundation. Maybe next time we're looking at here to be foundation and a little bit bigger grant to serve more communities and like that we can we can grow like and for, for us it is you we look up to you know 
uh, in that sense. Each one has something to look up to. Yes, yes. Thank you. We look up to the communities that we serve because they're the ones who bring us the smile. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank, thank you very much. And thank you, Prachiji, for organizing this. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I'm Bala Saibwa. I'm here to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, I, on the behalf of uh, KJ Somaya Bharatiya Sanskriti Pitham and KJ Somaya Institute of Dharma Studies, and the entire fraternity of the college, uh, first of all, uh, extend my most sincere thanks to our uh, distinguished speaker, uh, Ms. Somaya Ayer for uh, making an excellent presentation and uh, making this seminar on the International Yoga Day. A very meaningful and interesting. Uh, you enlighten on that uh, yoga empowers us for the best existence. Uh, it leads to harmonious living by uh, enriching the relationship between man, society, nation, the entire universe. And, uh, especially able group or vulnerable communities. I would also thank our uh, director, Dr. Supriya Rai, for her guidance and uh, moral support. I'm happy to express a vote of thanks to uh, our staff for their presence in this seminar. Uh, I thank our center head, Ms. Prachi Pathak, Madam, for uh, having organizing this wonderful lecture. Finally, I uh, thank wonderful students, not only from our department, uh, rather also uh, from other departments of the institution. Uh, thank you so much for your cooperation. Uh, once again, I uh, thank all for your cordial cooperation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now. Thank you, Balaji. Thank you. Thank so you, definitely Prachi. our teachers will uh, uh, apply this uh, guidance in their practices with uh, vulnerable communities. Super. Yes. Super.